I'm Jason Maxisi. I'm uh, currently dancing in Las Vegas um, at the Luxor with the Jabberwockies. I pretty much just, uh, as for myself, I just teach uh, when I get the chance to. I just uh, start a new family, so it's kind of harder for me to do that now, but still dance uh, professionally um, as a career, so that's pretty much what I'm doing. Pursuing dance, uh, what got me started was actually my, my older brother. He would bring home uh, VHS tapes of just um, events that would happen uh, in Sacramento. Whatever he was into, I was kind of into, or at least I got into it. So he got into dance, and he looked up to a lot of other uh, groups that were happening in SAC, and pretty much he started a group as well. A bunch of his friends, and they were called Abstract Styles, so I was just a little brother that just hung around all the time, and um, you know, whatever they looked up to, I looked up to, and whatever they were fans of, I was a fan of. I would just tag along, just sit at their rehearsals because I had nothing to do and I wanted to just spy, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> but I ended up being like their cameraman, like just like wherever they had performances, I would just go and uh, record them. But eventually, um, you know, I got older and tried to dance myself, couldn't really do it. Yeah, I guess they had a gig and offered me a spot and my brother was like, just do it. So I ended up just doing that. And that was basically the start of this thing called dance for me in my life. <laughs> yeah. Back in, I think I started like 2000, at least 99, 2000. <laughs> 99, 2000, I uh, started with a group called Abstract Styles. And we've always, you know, performed and looked up to other groups. There was a group called the Kaboom Squad, which consists of three of the members, original members of Jabberwockies, which is uh, Phil Tag, Kevin Brewer, and, and Joe Larat. From there, you know, they, we always looked up to them. So whatever, again, and then they looked up to, you know, Mind Tricks or um, from, you know, the bass. So it kind of just like trickled. Anyway, kind of always looking up to them. They kind of did their thing and, you know, Kaboom Squad, they, you know, parted ways and wanted to do different things. You know, uh, Kevin and Joe moved to San Diego and, and Phil stayed in SAC. I mean, besides doing like high school dance too, you know, just, just to throw that out there. Infinite Motion, Laguna Creek, class 03, weird. All right, Phil ended up teaching a class and starting a group called Boogie Monsters, and uh, I was the first to, uh, one of the, the first to, you know, of that generation. So we, you know, we did the same thing, you know, we did competitions. And I think that was the first official group to where, you know, um, it, it strayed away from just, you know, cotillions, and I think that's where I kind of started taking things a little bit more seriously, you know, but still kind of doing abstract styles in the back, you know, just in the midst, so I was doing both. At age 20, uh, I think I just took a leap of faith and then rolled out to San Diego, really just to get away from dance, actually to, to get away from just the lifestyle of, of it, because everything was just, you know, going in the same circle, I was doing the same exact things. So I, I left to actually quit dance, and then, um, on my way over, like literally on the drive down to San Diego, uh, Joe calls me up and is like, what are you doing on Saturday? Kevin's starting a new group. And I'm like, okay, I'll go. You know, I was just like, all right, let's do it. So um, I ended up joining um, or being a part of Kevin's group in San Diego, um, Super Galactic Beat Manipulators, so SGBM down in San Diego. So I was the first generation to kind of be, you know, see that develop. And that also consisted of like some of the other original members of Jabberwockies, which is like Ben Chung, Chris Styles, but then, you know, Lando Wilkins was also a part of um, Super Galactic, KJ Gonzalez, Anna Sorrell. They were all a part of, you know, so I was very lucky to be, I guess, just in that lifetime, just, you know, to experience that. And then about a year, so I was only out there for about a year, and then I actually moved back to Sacramento. Joe had already started a group called Press Play. I just kind of came back and uh, I was originally just trying to get back into dance again and um, get my life back situated, but it, it was, I was doing, I went straight back to Boogie, you know, because I was home. From there, I was dancing with Boogie for a little bit. Joe had offered and said, hey, do you want to uh, assist? Do you want to be assistant director for Press Play? And I had, a, you know, a crossroad in my life and I was just like, well, you know, I could stick with Boogie, who's amazing, my home, my home team, you know, uh, where I started a lot of foundation, or I can leave and, and direct this group. 
who, you know, who are just starting out, the youth and whatnot. So basically, I made a decision. I said, you know, whether or not I'm a part of Boogie Monsters, they're still gonna be dope. They're still gonna be Boogie Monsters. I would rather put my efforts towards a new generation or to where my efforts, you know, so they can they can grow too. I ended up just being a part of, uh, or directing Press Play, you know, assistant directing, and then Joe, uh, 2008, Jabberwockies wins America's Best Dance Crew. You know, they do the whole, they, ch they change the game, you know what I mean? So a lot of decisions were made for, for Phil, Kevin, Joe, where they had to leave, you know, they took, they, they took their career somewhere else. But so from there, it was me and Brandon Greathouse who were directing Press Play. And uh, that lasted, you know, for a good four years of, um, you know, just putting my heart and soul into, uh, into that group. And then, long story short, Joe gives me, you know, uh, a call saying, "Hey, we need a swing, or we're looking for some swings for, for the, uh, for, for the Jabba Cast in, in Nevada, or the Jabba Show in Nevada, or in Las Vegas, you know, trying to move out here, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing." And, you know, that that was probably one of the hardest decisions of my life, but. Um, no regrets whatsoever. It's you know it's amazing. Um, so basically, handed off the torch and made my way to not knowing where it's gonna where it's gonna lead me. I still don't know where it's gonna lead me to be honest with you. But yeah, now I'm in. Now I reside in Las Vegas. I have a child. I'm married. It's crazy. <laughs> Life changing. The dance community has definitely grown. Like I will, like it's just far none. You know, it's it's something that I don't even think could have like imagined. I mean, man, a lot to say. There's just so much to say. Cause, cause, um, you know, I jumped in. I feel like at where dance was at its lowest. And you know, when you get into something, when you when you're passionate about something, you kind of do your research or you kind of like dwell on the past and how it used to be. And I feel I feel like dance was huge back then in the 80s, you know, the mainstream. So I feel like anything kind of has its its waves, you know, and it's definitely at its peak right now. I mean, hopefully it just stays that way, but you know, who knows, maybe it'll go back down. Maybe it's not a fad anymore. But that back then, you know, it was definitely simplified. If I had to make a comparison, I mean like Back then it was like, it was harder. We would practice in the garage. I'm sure other groups still practice in a garage, but it was, it was a lot more simplified. A lot of it was just, you know, like friends, you know, and then they would start something and, and put something together collectively. I mean, it, a group of 10 was like a lot back then. It was like, it was huge, you know, but now you got like a, a stage full of like, or a group full of like 50 people, 50 plus or 40 plus and, um, but it, I mean, it's, it's amazing, it's, it's great. I think it's still, it's not a bad thing. I wanna say um, back then, it was, um, like I said, it was more simplified. So I mean, as far as like, there, I'm not saying there wasn't musicality, but it wasn't like as intricate as it would be today. Um, you know, it's your basic one and two counts, you know, um, and just very fun party dance, New Jack swing type, type. Now it's just, um, and you know, I guess you would call that hip hop. And then now it's like hip hop, but with like so many subdivisions towards that, and everybody's just tapping into it. So it's consistently evolving, and I think it's a it's, it's a good thing. But I do want to mention that, like, I feel I feel as if we live in a uh, we're in a generation now, to the point where it's like, you know, if I want to look anything up on the internet, I could just look it up. If I want to. Uh, research a video or get a video of like the latest like Sean Evaristo video I can do that in like seconds whereas back then it was more <clears throat> I'm gonna say it anyway it was more special back then because it was so rare you know and that's what made it so why a lot of us were so passionate about it was because you either had to be there or you had to have have somebody had recorded it and you watched it from that video you know I, I remember living off of VHS tapes of just other performances and other performers and that was like you know my dance Bible you know I ran that tape until it was like destroyed you know <laughs> or not even destroyed like the tracking wouldn't even work anymore you know tracking that's hella weird to say <laughs> but anyway like you know, it, it's you had to be there. You had to be at the that event. Now, I mean, we have this thing called YouTube. Now, I'm not knocking technology and its advancements. You know, like I think it's 
great that I can do that. But now I feel like uh, creativity is being saturated, and um, it's it or it's just lack thereof. Um, people want to go with the flow of the next, you know. And I'm not knocking that either. You know, I think that's you gotta, you know, you gotta start somewhere and, and evolve. Nobody wants a carbon copy of whatever was out there. It's already been done. You know what I mean? So thrive to be original. You know. If you were, let's say. Um, the president of the dance community. Oh wow! That's a, <laughs> is there even such a thing? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Let's say like this hypothetically, if you were the president of the dance community, and there were like three things that, if you said, that's what everyone has to abide by. Like, what would those three things be? Oh my gosh! That's huge. <laughs> I'm gonna be assassinated. <laughs> what? I'll be like, I think. <laughs> I know. Woo, that was tough. Okay, so if I if, and I had to tell the dance community, and this includes like every dance community ever, like out there. Mm, okay, let's narrow it down and be more specific. Let's just say uh, the urban choreography dance community. So like what we do. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man. <laughs> There's three rules. Oh man. <laughs> Might be a little cornball, but I just, you know. I know. Um, respect each other. Cool. Respect each other. And, and it's to the point where it's like, um, I don't believe in idolizing dance. Um, I love dance. It's a passion. It's a tool. It's a it's a life changing tool. You know, it's what brings. It's just like playing a sport. You know, at the end of the day, it's just dance, man. Like, don't take it so seriously. So if you have like this hater, like, oh, you're a biter, or, or that's my move, or or they're whack, or they're too good, and I don't like that. You know? <laughs> you know, or whatever the case, man. Like, you know, at the end of the day, man, we're all human beings. We're all under one, you know, one God and. Um, you know, like, it's, it, it's not that serious. And, um, you know, so you can only respect the fact that we share the same love for doing something, you know, and it's, um, sometimes, like, you know, people get caught up in, and this, again, like I said, this could be in anything. They just get caught up in, so caught up in that world to where it's like, it's life or death with them you know it's not a gang <laughs> I mean you could treat it like it if you really want to but you know um, man you know it's it's um, it's I th yeah it's just it's just what it does for people that I, I truly believe that's what that's why I love dance that's why I love it and that it could how much it can change people or help people out without even them really thinking about it they're just focused on whatever that is and you know like they come out like oh dang i didn't i do know what to do in this situation this life situation <laughs> like whatever you know so something something like that I, I that's not that's one rule but i you know what i'm not gonna lie I'm not, i don't know the two other ones just just work hard and eat a sandwich <laughs> just <laughs> Drink lots of water. <laughs> Don't do drugs. Yeah. I think the one of my favorite things about uh, this new generation is just how fast they can pick up, and it comes to show that how, if you want something really bad, you know, it, it, you could do it. You know, there's no, there's no end, and there's no excuse. Back then, it was so hard to get, you know, the proper training or the right footage to, you know, base off what you need to, you know, to work on. But like I said, you know, in this generation now, there's just so much content out there that I feel like, you know, especially the little ones, soaking it up like sponges. They're just like little people, like, like as if they were dancing for years, but it's not even the case. It's just fun for them. It's just, you know, they, they're, um, you know, as far as, you know, education and, and things to like stimulate the brain and the body, it's all there ready for them to go and I think that's that's my kind of philosophy on why they're able to, you know what I mean like it's cute you know they're they're picking up so quickly and it's it's almost beyond cute because it's just now it's just pure talent you know what I mean like they're just 
they're ready to go, um, you know, and, and perfect example is the Art of Technique, TAT. Um, they're, you know, when I seen, when I seen them, it, it all comes down to, you know, culture. Um, they were surrounded by the culture to where it was, it was raw. You know what I mean? It wasn't at a studio. It wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna bring my, my kid to a studio for like a couple weeks and they're gonna be that good. No, it was like, they, they were surrounded by the culture, you know, and um, they had older ones, you know, guiding them their way or whatever the case, you know, you know, and they just, they just threw out talent. And it, it goes beyond just, you know, that's just an example, but I'm sure a lot of the little ones that are going off, they're picking their, I think it's, I think it's the same formula for them. And, and, and that also goes with, uh, you know, I, maybe I'm just talking about like 10 year olds or younger, but even just like high school, um, you know, because I'm going, I'm consistently, you know, like teaching and I'm seeing a lot of new faces and new generation. Uh, when I go to a show, I just see like just so many, you know, talented people and they just, they, they pick up so quickly on, on what to fix. And, you know, I feel like everyone who led from the front finally harnessed the formula of how to uh, become or successful and it's just quicker to become successful now. That's, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I would like to see the community go um, like working, you know what I mean? Because of being able to do what they love and live comfortably, um, I think that's what dancers still strive, you know, like it's still uh, uh, an issue, I think. I feel like we're one of, the, one of the hardest working people out there, you know? The community is one of the hardest like working community around we, and we do this as a passion, we do this for free, <laughs> you know, like we will stay up, you know, cause I, I, I realized that, you know, like I work at my job and don't get me wrong, I love my job at the same time, like it's tiring and it's, it's crazy, but I had realized, man, like I would have been doing this for free anyway. I would have been doing this if it wasn't a career to do, you know, because it's just, it's just a passion now. You know, back then it was kind of like, oh, you know, I want to be the, you know, I want to go to LA and I want to do, um, you know, I want to be in a commercial and, and that's still valid, you know, as being in LA, but like now, like I wish it would just be to the point where like the industry can pick from community dancers like it was nothing, you know, because I mean? just the field out there of them hardworking people. I mean, it, it's a give and take because then, you know, some people don't want to make it mainstream and then it would just turn people off, whatnot, I don't know. But I would, I would love to see um, more dancers in the forefront. I wish, I wish dancers were to the point where it's like, I don't, man, like, as if they were like music artists, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing to sell. That's the hardest part. We don't have a physical product to be like, here you go and I'm gonna make millions, but we work just as hard and are artistically and, and, you know, whatever to, you know, I don't know. I don't know how that can become, but I wish that, you know, you can still, like there was more opportunity to uh, make a living off of this passion, you know, not just a passion and then move on to the next, keep it, you know, because we work so hard for it, so, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, now we're moving on to our third section. So we're gonna migrate again. Oh yeah. Oh, you're doing this on purpose. Like this is. <laughs> I like the fact that you know it gives it gives a sense of confidence to myself, being able to push forward and uh, being able to just have a platform to express myself. That's just at the end of the day, you know, everybody wants to be heard. I'm naturally introverted, so I mean, like, just the fact that I can I can express my I have an outlet to express myself, it, wh whether people are listening or watching, I have a reaction to it. You know? I don't know. I just I just like that. <laughs> I like uh, again and really more so like it's just it's just pushing people in the right way where I feel it is the right way so that they can keep going giving you know what I mean just being able to give it's more about giving than it is taking for me I do what I can you know to, to, to fulfill that need I just love that you know I love that I can um, I can share <laughs> to not be lazy you know and it's not even no, no, no I take that back it's not even being lazy it's to believe in yourself a little bit more you know, I would have told myself to, to believe in myself in a little bit more and, you know, see the light at the end of the tunnel, encourage more people. And I have this, like, this new thing where it's just kind of an epiphany because, I mean, you know, though I'm at where I'm at, I go through all kinds of, the same struggles, it just happens in a different way. 
and, and, and a big thing is fear, you know, like fear is just such a, you know, I wish somebody had told me, you know, well, I'm sure they told me, but maybe I just, it just didn't click, but just the state of being uncomfortable, nobody likes that. Nobody loves, nobody likes pressure. I mean, some people do, but it, those who learn to love pressure or love fear, it's like limitless after that because, you know, the, your, your mind, your mentality is big portion, especially in dance, in anything really. It's all, it's all timing, you know. Um, There's so many, so many, so many talented groups and talented people out there that I just got lucky. You know, at the end of the day, I just got lucky. And um, it doesn't mean that they don't deserve the spot. It doesn't mean that they, they don't work just as hard or even harder, you know. Um, you know, so it's like, you kind of just have to push it through. You know, all, all timing is different. Hard work wins at the end, end of the day. Um, and, and I want to put it out there to where, you know, um, not, you know, because some people are like, you know, oh, you, you, you do this for a career, that's awesome, that's so great, you got to, you know, you, you, you did it. But it's like, well, you did it too, you know, because I have a lot of friends or, you know, family or whatever the case may be, and they, they took life another route, and it's like, no, you, you did it just as, well, as much as I did, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, I don't know what, maybe it's on TV or maybe it's, you know, um, it's just, I'm trying not to like fluff it up and not, you know, just fluff it. It's just a job. <laughs> it's just a job. A job that I love to do. You know what I mean? So do what you love, love what you do, you know. Uh, whistle while you work, work while you whistle. You just gotta find it out, figure it out, you know. Um, be uncomfortable. You know, it takes, it does take a lot to, uh, to, to get where you need to be. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of sacrifices as far as if you where you want to go. And, you know, again, you can stay comfortable with whatever you're at, and hopefully, you know, that turns out too, and stay safe. But it's those that kind of take risks that you know people tend to, um, you know, give like the kudos, <laughs> give the kudos to. Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, just. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> All bad.